Hello, people watching this video. This is me, Mohit Random Stuff, and today, 15 days after it ended, I'm doing a WandaVision review because I don't know what else to do. So. And uh, it's very late because, I mean, by now, I've already watched the first episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier as well, so. It, yeah. It's uh, depressing how lazy I am, but. I'm going to review WandaVision, so yes, that's what I'm going to do. And yeah, I'm basically just going to go through every episode and go through the plot and what I liked about it, and yes. And uh, also, like, spoilers. Because spoilers. <laughs> Lots of spoilers. Lots. For the whole show. I and mean, spoiling everything. So, go away. If you haven't watched One Division, I sound way too unenthusiastic. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna film it and then and then do another voiceover. I'm I'm so, I'm so dull. Ah, uh, I sound way too dull. I'm gonna try and make myself more enthusiastic. So, okay, let's review One Division. Go. Episode one, film for a live studio audience. Oh, what a good episode! I like this episode. It was a really good starter because. You know, and um, it's confusing because you're wondering, like, you're straight away into a sitcom world, and it's interesting, and you get to meet so many interesting characters, uh, like Agnes, and you get to see Vision and Wanda after almost two years, so that's fun. And it's funny, which is good, and um, it's entertaining. Um, though it is a bit jarring, not the... The can laughter can be really jarring, but can laughter is jarring in anything. Friends, for example, and yeah, it's just irritating. But that's in any sitcom. Can laughter is horrible, so I'm happy they got rid of it in the sixth episode. So, but uh, yeah, and the black and white and fifty stuff is really good. So uh, yeah, my only problem is the can laughter. And that's really it. And I also like the little tension that they give with the Mrs. Hart scene. It confuses you, and it's good. It's, it's good. Yeah, and the humour, once again, it's really funny. Like, like super funny. Ow. Um, funny. That's... It, it was funny. Yeah. Episode 2, Don't Touch That Dial. Another really funny episode. The magic show scene is really funny. Though it probably is my least favourite episode, because it kind of is... It's honestly... So... There's a magic show, basically. And so... That's basically it. They just need to prepare for a magic show. And, uh... So, it kind of seems like filler for me, because it kind of feels like you're trying to get from episode 2 to episode 3, so from episode 1 to 3, and it's kind of trying to just be in the middle. It's kind of like uh, episode 7 as well, where it just, it, it, it's, it's like point A to B, it, it wants to get you from episode 1 to episode 3, because that's where stuff happens. Um, even though there is some good tension and mystery, just like episode 1, with the sword thing, the sword, uh, the beekeeper, and, uh, and the radio scene is quite good, and that, uh, red blood, and the helicopter, toy helicopter is all pretty cool, but at the end of the day, it kind of just seems like filler, even though that magic show scene is banging, like, hilarious, I find that really funny, and Vision, this is probably the funniest scene in the show, so, not bad. Not bad. But, uh, yeah. I'm not really going through the plots for these first few episodes because there's just sitcom stuff, I guess. So. Episode 4 is when I'm going to start going through the plots a bit more. So, uh, Next episode, episode 3. Now in colour. Oh, it's nice to have colour, but the can laughter is still here, so, you know. Sad. Um, now in colour. So, we just get. This probably has my favourite theme song of the show which is good, and it's just a good episode. Uh, I think the giving birth scenes are really funny, and it's just funny, and this is a good episode. It's the best episode at this point, and that ending is so good, and, you know, this weird stuff with Herb and Agnes just randomly talking about something, and it, it confuses you, and Wanda just... Actually, in episode two, the no, and then... She just like 
turns back time and uh you know it just adds on to the fact that something sinister is happening that's cool so so it's a good episode and that ending is brilliant and uh it just gets you more hyped for the episode coming next week and yeah and it's kind of creepy and interesting it's not really much to say but that's it so episode four we interrupt this program okay now this is a really good episode i love this episode probably one of my favorites uh so we, you start off with a bunch of people appearing are reappearing from the blip and i mean in of itself that's awesome because of all the places it's a hospital and then you learn that maria rambo died and in all honesty, I, I'm actually quite happy. I thought she was a trash character. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's kind of sad for Monica because she's lost her mother. And then, you know, after three weeks, she uh, goes back to S.W.O.R.D. And then we learn a bunch of stuff. And, you know, you get to see from everyone else's point of view what the sitcom world looks like. And it's quite cool seeing characters like Jimmy Woo back and Darcy. And they're really good and funny. So, yes, that's... Uh, this is a 10 out of 10 episode, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to plot, it's really good, and story, plot and story are basically the same thing, right, um, and yes, and it's cool to get back into, like, normal Marvel again, even though the uh, sitcoms are very unique. Did I have any problems with this episode? Uh, no, actually I didn't, because this is a great episode, it's a very good episode, and, you know, seeing Vision dead is really creepy and i wouldn't say scary because it's not scary but it's creepy and you're and it just once again adds on to the mystery of what's happening and it's cool it's it's just cool and yeah the hex it's, it's just cool that's one oh whoops uh episode five on a very special episode uh compared to last week's episode this wasn't that great but i still love the episode and that scene with Norm was so good, and, uh, you know, it was just, um, seeing Pietro in the end was really cool, and even though it wasn't the, um, to you, Pietro, but that guy's alright. I mean, I liked him in the first, like, Days of Future Past, he was really good, but the other two, the other three, sorry, no, the other two, he was kind of there. And that argument at the end of the episode is really good, and Billy and Tommy are also very cool. And though it did take me a second to get used to, like, older, because I thought the little kids were kind of, uh, were really cute. It was kind of... But by, by the end of the series, they're probably some of the best characters. And, you know, you get more character development, and that interaction with Haywood and Wanda and everyone, that was so sick. Seeing her just come out of the hex like that was... It was cool. It was, it was awesome, and you know, uh, just more coolness, and that, once again, that scene with Norm was a real standout, and, yeah, so, great episode, and it really was a special one, so, ah, oh, now, this was a great episode, I swear, it was hilarious, no more canned laughter, which was, oh, it was a dream come true, I swear, um, you know, you got a really good scene uh, where they, where M uh, Monica and Jimmy Woo kick some butt, and you know, the ending with the hex expanding was really cool. And once again, it makes you really just get excited to see what uh, Circus Darcy would look like. And you know, seeing Vision try to escape the hex was horrific and kind of awesome. And and yeah. It's and uh, Pietro was also very confusing, like, it makes you wonder more, and that scene with Agatha, or, sorry, Agnes, as she was known at the time, was just so sick, and great episode, really, and uh, Billy and Tommy really grew on me in this episode, and they really did just become really awesome characters, and yeah, that's a great episode. This just great. It was also really creepy seeing on, on the other side of the town. The, like, you see a tear coming out of someone's eye. I mean, do you know how messed up that is? Seeing frozen people and it's it's, it's, quite, it's quite creepy. So, uh, oh, I keep doing that. Uh, episode 7, Breaking the Fourth Wall. Reading the title of this episode and seeing as it came after probably the best one, I was really excited. But, 
it was kind of a letdown. It was kind of just dull and it just didn't. It just kind of was boring. Uh, though the Monica scene was really, and the Monica stuff was good. It was just the sitcom stuff that was kind of just, eh. Especially compared to the sitcom stuff that they did earlier. Uh, but I think the stuff that really keeps on top of the first two episodes is probably the Monica scene. But above all that, Agatha all along. I mean, what a banger. Am I right? That, that, that's just it. If anyone asks me why I don't completely just think this is a boring, dull episode, do you know what I say to them? Agatha all along. And uh, you just have to agree with me because that is a banging tune. Like, the best song that the MCU has had. Like, the MCU has never had a better song than Agatha all along. Fight me. Um, yeah. Other than that, it's just a very average episode, and yeah. Oh, now here is when we get into the real best stuff, okay? I mean, you go through Wanda's entire past, her history, so it starts with Sokovia, which I think is very inaccurate. If you remember, in Age of Ultron, Pietro said that they were sitting at dinner when the shell hit their apartment, whereas in the show it shows that they were watching a sitcom. So, that kind of confused me. But then again, I guess he was little, so he didn't really remember. So, I guess he could just pass it off to them. But, the Stark Industries missile was cool to see, even though he was sitting next to two children who were about to get blown up. Not really, though. And, um, yeah, seeing her walk through all this, go through all this trauma, and seeing the Hydra logo again was quite cool. And, uh, yes. It was a brilliant episode, and seeing Wanda in tears was quite sad, and it was a good episode, and I can't feel you seen, oh, oh, that was so sad, just depressing, it was just depressing, it was just that, ooh, and, um, it was just a great episode, and then that ending where she's called the Scarlet Witch, oh, and then that post credit scene, ooh, just sets up something so awesome, it really pays off in the series finale, which is literally titled the series finale. What an episode! Action-packed, sad, and satisfying. Okay, I love. I mean, when I first watched this episode, I was kind of underwhelmed, but on a rewatch, on a rewatch, this um, ten ten times like better because it gives a really satisfying conclusion to the show, to the story of Wanda and Vision, and I like that a lot and. It's really sad. I mean, that scene where Vision just disappears is so sad, and the music and everything, and the fights and the intellectual conversation between White Vision and Vision, it's just powerful stuff. And then the fights between Agatha and Wanda, and you know, it's just wow. And then you know, Wanda's lesson at the end, and then you know how she just takes down the villain. It's it's all very cool. So, so. I forgot to go through the adverts. The uh, so this one, this one's advert was what was the advert for this episode? It was something. It was um, I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was the Stark toaster. Based, I think that's to do with like how her apartment was bombed by Stark weapons, not by Tony Stark himself, but by his weapons, which he sold to like terrorists and stuff. I think. So yes, um. That was just that. Episode 2 was the Strucker Watch, which was obviously a reference to Baron Von Strucker, who gave her her powers with the Mind Stone, which was Loki's Scepter. So that's... Episode three's was... I think it was the Lagos, and, like, when you make a mess that you didn't mean to make... Uh, mm, Lagos, she, she blew up the building. Obviously it wasn't her fault completely, even though she flew it up. She flew up crossbones into a building, and yes, episode five was. Uh, oh god, I mixed them up, haven't I? No, episode three was Hydra Soak, which was uh, make you a goddess, because Hydra made her a goddess, didn't they? And it was also a reference to Agents of Shield, which was cool, kind of. So yeah, I guess because Hydra made her a god, basically. So yeah, this one was the other one that I was just talking about. Uh, episode 6 was Yo Magic, Snack on Yo Magic, that's reference to Agatha, who snacks on other people's magic, because she takes away magic. And episode 7 was, uh, Nexus, 
thing, which was the Nexus is like the multiverse. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very ter I'm terrible at explaining. I should have said at the beginning. Go watch a competent person review this, not me. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll probably add it in the beginning. But yes. So my overall thoughts on the show. Uh, terrible. I mean, honestly, the writing, the acting, it was all so stiff and boring, and I hated every second. I mean, I, this was also didn't put anything into her performance. Neither did Paul Benny. I mean, he was so dull and boring. And Agatha Harkness was one of the worst Marvel villains. Jimmy Woo was just no. Oh, Monica Rambeau was so boring, and she was just your typical uh, random side character. And it was all so dull, and all the characters were just so boring. And it, I just hated this show so much. It was so boring, and nothing happened. There was no action or anything until like the final episode. It was so unsatisfying because none of my fan theories worked out. <gasps> anyway, uh, on a more serious note, I love this show. This is me being serious. Okay, I thought it was funny. Um, Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany didn't, were not stiff. They were hilarious and they gave brilliant performances. Would I say worth an Emmy? Well, I mean, if uh, if someone like Ian DeCastica can't win an Emmy for his role as Fitz in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., then I don't think they're going to win Emmys, but uh, they might. So, yeah, Monica Rambeau, uh, I hated her mother. Uh, because she was just so boring and stiff in Captain Marvel, just like, well, Captain, I don't know, I mean, so, yeah, so I was happy that she died, and I didn't really like Monica Rambeau in Captain Marvel herself, but then again, she was a little kid, so you can't really blame her. Massive improvement, I swear. She went from being a character that I wasn't, that, I didn't care too much about, to probably the second best character on the show. She was so good and like she has powers now and she's yeah billy and tommy uh don't know the actors names but um they were really cool they were likable and they were fun uh agatha harkness was a great villain even though i don't really think they showed much of her as a villain but, you know white vision was cool director hayward was a git uh jimmy Woo and darcy were hilarious side characters and overall it was a great show i loved every second of it and i wish they could make a season two but i mean Hey, they could call it Witch Vision. Like, Witch Vision she would talk to choose. I'm not funny. Um, and yeah, I don't really know what else to talk about because I'm not a professional. Um, yeah, I like the sitcom vibes, even the can laughter was irritating as heck. And uh, yeah, the mystery and the stuff, it was good. And the finale was just a satisfying conclusion to Wanda and Vision's story. So, yeah, it's nice. So, yeah, and the theme songs were brilliant. And I'm going to go ahead and rank the theme songs, so... So, my least favourite theme song was Let's Keep It Going. It was just some typical 90s rock music that I didn't get. Um, so, so, yeah. Episode 6... Okay, episode two was really good, and it had that stupid tune that I'm still singing to this day, and it's been over two months since, um, since the episode, and I've still got this stupid tune in my head. And I've only rewatched this episode, like, once. So, I, I mean, that infectious tune is good, but, and I like the intro, it was nice, but the others were just better. So, so yeah. Episode 5, A Newlywed Couple, so, I like this, and it's kind of like the Dick Van Dyke show, even though I've never actually watched the Dick Van Dyke show. Um, and it was a... Good intro, it was a really nice way to start a series, and it was confusing, but it was cool, so I liked it, and it was catchy, kind of. Episode 4, WandaVision 2000. This is very much like The Office theme, and I like The Office, the US Office, and it's quite a good show. So, I liked it quite a bit, and I think that's why I like The Office, so that's why I like this intro. So, episode 3, Making Up As We Go Down. Oh, I love this one. It's so cool, and seeing, like, Baby Vision, though it haunted my nightmares forever... Like, my dreams became nightmares because of it. It was still great. And seeing Billy and Tommy and that's a happy family life is so lovely. And it just makes the series finale even sadder. Uh, it's my second favourite. We Got Something Cooking. This is definitely my favourite of, like, yeah. I just don't know. I just love the tune and the ba 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 wonder vision. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's just catchy and 
it's cool. It's my favourite of the actual intros, but none of them are anywhere near as good as number one, which is... Hurry up. Come on! Come on! Okay, Agatha all... Uh, oh, we're still going. Uh, okay, we could stop now and... Uh, are we done? Okay, we're done. Agatha all along. Oh, what a catchy... Just... Oh, I bet this is everyone's number one. I, I'm willing to bet that this is everyone's number one. It's catchy, it's cool, and it's just fun. There's no colon for the f number four, you imbecile. And uh, it's just the best one. I mean, it's cool. The visuals are cool, and it's just a really sick villain song. I mean, villains really all do always get the best songs. So, and yeah, the theme songs are all pretty decent, but some are just better than others. And one, uh, Agatha Long is the best one. So, yeah. It's from my one of my least favorite episodes. Okay, now I'm gonna rank the episodes because what else is there to do? Just talk about it more. So my least favorite episode was "Don't Touch That Dial." As I said earlier, this was my least favorite, mostly because it kind of just felt like filler. It was just like point A to point B episode, and that's why I didn't like it as much. So episode uh, one is next. Episode one was a great opener and it was entertaining and it was hilarious. Not as hilarious as episode two but still it was just a good opener you know introduce all the characters in a really nice way and uh, a decent advert and yeah it just gets you hyped for the next stuff to come. Episode seven breaking the fourth I liked a lot of the Monica Rambeau stuff and seeing Vision and Darcy have a little chat about life, but overall, the Wonder stuff was dull and it didn't really do anything. It was kind of just, uh, as I said, it was just a point A to B, as just like episode two, just get from episode six to episode eight, and it also has the misfortune of being in between the two best episodes. So, yeah, and it just kind of was underwhelming in many, many ways. So. Episode 6, Now in Colour. Oh, this episode was so good. Funny, best theme song. Um, hilarious. Wait, funny and hilarious. And uh, just overall, uh, seeing that ending. And it just confuses you more and it surprises you. And it's just cool. It's a cool, good ending. And to, yeah. Episode 5, on a very special... So, uh, as I said earlier, I like this episode. There's a lot of good tension and a lot of good norm stuff. Norm stuff, that's what they call it. And that email from Darcy is really cool. And that scene with Wanda is really cool. But I think the thing that, it, the reason it's so low is because the other episode was just better. Episode 4, the series finale. Too much hate on this episode for no reason. Brilliant episode, love it. Action-packed, sad and cool. Okay, that's all I can say about it. Episode 3, we interrupt this program. Oh, wow. They interrupt... I, this is the only time that they've ever interrupted a program, and I've been all for it. So, yes. A uh, great episode, and just awesome. Episode 2, all new Halloween spectacular. Oh, brilliance. Just more brilliance. Oh, uh, first of all, comic actor costumes are awesome, and all that stuff. So, yes. Uh, episode 1, previously on. And I'm just trying to get through this so quickly, because I'm just, I, I can't be bothered for it. Previously on, uh, sad, funny, not funny, this episode has hardly any humour in it, it's just sad and cool, and nice. It's a good episode, and that's all I can say about it, so, yes. Now, to end this review, I'm going to score WandaVision. My score for WandaVision is down to the exact detail. My score for WandaVision is 9.5. Four four eight two nine four eight eight three two nine four three nine three eight five nine two nine four eight eight three seven five seven eight three nine five nine two eight four nine three. That is my score for one division out of ten. I think I'm over the top there. And that is my review of WandaVision. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm sorry if I spoil WandaVision for you, even though it's your fault for sticking around for more than a second. So, uh, yeah, I should have done a spoiler free review, but whatever. Uh, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. G goodbye. Just, just, just goodbye. Just, just, uh, no thanks for watching thing on the screen. 
I think, until wedge team. But um yeah. Good goodbye. Uh, one division.